Hello, my name's Michael Keneally, and I'm speaking to you from a great sacred landscape spot in the far west of Ireland. It's known in the ancient manuscript, the Book of Invasions, as the bed of the couple. And what happened here was that on the eve before the pivotal Second Battle of Moitura, fought a few miles from here, two great gods of the Tour de Danon mated. And so basically, on the eve before the battle, the Dagda, the great good god of the Tour de Danon, came to this place and he found standing astride the river Unshun, where it leaves Loch Arrow behind me, the Morrigan, the war goddess of the ancient Irish. She was washing herself, the manuscript says, and the couple mated, and from that mating, the sacred sovereignty of the Tour de Danon was validated and victory was granted when the battle took place the day after. There's very great, very great meaning here. And the meaning is that ethical kingship has to be underpinned by defense of that, and if necessary, war. And the Morrigan offered her underpinning of the rule of the Tour de Danon. And the Morrigan is unfortunately often portrayed as a sort of harridan. But that is not her nature. She is a shapeshifter. And in battle, one of the ways she gives victory is by terrifying the opponents by her shrieking and sorcery. But her nature is ethical sovereignty. And she's not a mascot for dysfunctional behaviour and sheer aggression. The manuscript which reflects the most ancient oral memories of the Irish peoples, makes it clear that it is because of her validating of the Dagda that the Tour de Danon could succeed. This is such an important point. The nature of the Morrigan has been much obscured in recent times. So, who was the, va the battle fought between? Well, basically, on one side was the Tour de Danon, and their gods included the Dagda and the Morrigan. But they were essentially the people of the goddess Danu. And Danu is the great mother. Her energy is found in the land and in the sacred springs and she's recognised and worshipped from Ireland right back to the areas of the river Danube, for example. And the Tour de Danon were people of great magic and great skill. They were extremely inspirational. But the question is, were they in a sense too special in their skills to sustain their rule? Now the Tour de Danon came to Ireland and I believe they landed, they invaded, if you like, at Killary Harbour near here. There's evidence in the manuscript because one of their gods Ogma was said to have collected firewood on the islands of Killary Harbour when the Tour de Danon ended up in subjugation under Bress the Beautiful. But nevertheless they fought a first battle 
And then it came to this second battle of Moitura. And here they met the most ancient and formidable, twisted, evil, debased foe, the Formorians, led by Balor of the evil eye. He had an eye in the centre of his forehead that dealt death and foulness and horror. And I think we can see from this the crossover to Kundalini energies. We can raise our Kundalini energies to our third eye, but we mustn't use them in a twisted, all-conquering way. And so near here, and the tour is actually going to the battlefield, the second battle of Moitura shortly, it's only a few minutes away, the battle was fought between the people of skill and a twisted people who had deteriorated and become dark and unethical. And basically, the Formorians had been dominant in Ireland, as it's called now, for hundreds of years. And the, it's got to be remembered that the intention of the gods when they, in, when they formed this land, when they created the earth, when the blueprint was set, was for the ethical and spiritual and energetic evolution of the human race. But if that was left to the Formorians, that was disaster because the whole culture would go in a downward spiral. And so the people of skill, the people of the goddess Danu, the Tua de Danon, met the Formorians and led by the new god Lu in the battlefield just now, just, just around the corner, they defeated the Formorians. But what it's so important to remember is that that victory was created by the mating of the Morrigan and the Dagda here, where the river Unshin leaves Loch Arrow. Because the Morrigan gave her gift of victory in battle and prophecy of victory after and out of the sacred mating between goddess and god sacred feminine and sacred masculine and so the ancient manuscript of the book of invasions embodies this central ancient truth that humanity needs to remember now because it's the key to humanity's happiness success and ethical occupation of the earth and humanity's ability to participate in the evolution of our species and the earth itself. And so I teach courses to meet the gods and goddesses of the two of the down and in my Druid Forest School. And I'm setting up a website called Returning Cora with Douglas Chamberlain from Chicago, where There'll be numerous opportunities to meet the gods and goddesses of the ancient Irish, to make an initial meeting with the Ogham, to see the sacred sites that are so prolific round here in the west of Ireland. But it was all underpinned by the gift of the Morrigan to the Dagda. Thank you.